All right, guys, there is going to be a ton of information in this video, and it might be confusing. Hit rewind, leave your questions in the comments. Let me know if you have any questions so that I can try to answer those. Before we get started, a disclaimer, I am not an electrician. So a lot more people are starting to use these power banks. They're becoming more powerful. They've got more watt hour storage, more amp hour usage. And some of them are more compact than others. And they're becoming really popular in the nomad off-grid community because of the simplicity of the setup. But you really have to know where to start to start using this in your system. This is a, it's just a, a grid that I made for a, ta a class that I'm getting ready to teach at my meetup. It's got your LED lights, USB ports, cigarette lighter adapters, dimmer switches, toggle switches, everything that you would typically see in your van. So I'm going, I've got all this wired to my fuse panel and I'm gonna show you how to connect this fuse panel depending on which unit you've got. All right, guys, when you get your system, the first thing that you wanna look at is what is the DC output look like? Is it a, is it a two pin aviator port? Is it a regular cigarette lighter adapter? Is it maybe an XT60 connector? Is it an Anderson connection? The first thing you wanna know is that DC output port. Once you figure out what type of DC output you have, then it's time to make a cable, okay? When you make the cable, okay, I use 12 gauge. So I use 12 gauge for everything, and then I do my inline fuse. I do a 20 amp inline fuse. So you get your 12 gauge wire. You you then need to connect your negative and your positive to whatever type of connector you're using. So this one, for example, is the XT60 connection. You can see that I have this going to my fuse panel. This is gonna connect to my battery, okay? You can see real close to that, it's about a hand distance away, I've got my inline fuse. You want this inline fuse to be as close to your system, your battery, as you can get it. Now, once you've got your wire connected to either your aviator plug or your XT60, your Anderson plug, now you're ready to connect it to the fuse panel. Now, You'll notice on my build that I have my aviator plug connected to an XT90 adapter connector. This can be confusing to some people. Why do I use an XT90 when I could just put O-rings on the end of my cord and connect it straight to the fuse panel. I could use my connector going to my inline fuse, going to my fuse panel with O-rings, a clean connection, just like I've got on this panel that I made right here. The only reason I have the this step, this XT90, is because I use a different system as a backup. So I need to be able to have this connect to the fuse panel and this connect to the fuse panel. And because they're different companies, because they're different units, they have a different connection. If I use an XT90 on my aviator plug, which is, this is how the Blue Eddy comes, and I use an XT90 on the end of my Jackery cord, and I use an XT90 on the end of my fuse panel, I now can interchange my three setups with my fuse panel 
because they have the same connection on the end of it. If you don't have a backup system, again, if you don't have a backup system, you're just going to use one system. You have 100% full confidence in your Blue Eddy, in your Jackery, in your Echo Flow, whatever you're using. You can 100% skip this step and only use the O-ring connections to your fuse panel. Your cable goes straight from your unit to your, use, your fuse panel. Okay, so let's talk about the fuse panel itself. The fuse panel is how you're going to get power going in every which direction in your van and being able to just use this sitting close to your fuse panel to send power to all the different areas in your van or whatever you're building out. So power goes through your cable from this power bank to your fuse panel. Once you get the power from here to the fuse panel, then you're able to send it in all kinds of different directions to power your entire setup. So whether you've got LED lights, USB ports, um, cigarette lighter adapters, dimmer switches, those wires all come back to one central location. That's your fuse panel. Your fuse panel protects those devices through the fuses. If something gets overpowered, you get a surge, that fuse is going to protect your components all in one spot. The cable that you have just made, again, is protected. So all your lights, all your USB ports go to one location. Your fuse panel has a positive and a negative. That's where your black and red wire from your cable gets plugged into. That gives you power. Unplug your cable and you lose power to your entire van. So if you have to work on something, all you've got to do is unplug the one cable. You've lost power to your DC panel. You can work on whatever you need to and then you plug your cable back in to your system. All right, guys, so you've got your DC components. All their wires are coming through. Hook up the positive to the positive terminals. Hook your negative up to the negative terminals. You've got the cord that you made. The negative is going to the negative terminal. The positive is going to the positive terminal. Once you plug this in, that now gives you power to your system. So no matter if I use my Jackery, my Jackery, or if I use my Blue Eddy, once I plug this in, I now have power to my panel. All right, so I hope I explained the wiring process here um, easy enough for you to follow along. If you have any questions, please leave them in the comments below. If you're an electrician and if you noticed anything that you would be different, anything that I stated incorrectly, please leave it in the comments below. We're all learning together. Um, I've been using this system for, for over a year now on several builds I've used it and no problems whatsoever. I've had a lot of success using the different power banks. So anyway, I hope this was helpful. Thanks for following along. We'll see you guys on the next video.